Okay. <laughs> Time to send it off to the scrap heap. So that's how you get the steering box out. Welcome back to episode two of the Shoebox build series. Uh, so today, um, we're gonna show you guys how we put this S10 clip on the front end. So where we had left off at the last episode was we kind of got everything ready. We got a little bit of paint splashed onto the S10 piece and then we were just uh, pretty much all stripped down and ready to do the cutting. Yeah, so. and this is definitely one of those cases you measure it a thousand times, cut once. Um, it is metal, so you yeah. kind of work with it, but you definitely want to get this right the first time around. Yeah, so um, we brought in a good buddy to uh, offer a little bit of perspective. He's been working in auto body for quite some time. I hate to say it, but I think it'll actually work. <laughs> um, a lot of front end collisions, they actually do clip swaps on those things where you can get like literally a brand new um, whole front end of the clip uh, for like some pickups and stuff like that. So he's got a little bit of expertise on it. He's worked in a hot rod shop back in the day. Um, so it was just good to have his, uh, his feedback. So um, that's kind of where everything kicks off. So I hope you guys enjoy. Um, we're gonna basically narrate uh, a lot of this video um, so that we can kind of explain how we went about doing this. Some of the tools that we used, we have a bunch of different levels. We've got a couple of short levels. Um, those were handy when it came to the S10 frame because you don't have a ton of length to work with. Um, there is a flat section on top of the S10 frame for slapping a couple of magnetic levels. Um, don't only go off of those levels, measure, measure, measure. <laughs> but uh, that was handy. We also had a, um, a four foot level and then a bunch of yeah T-squares that we used as well, which are, we took the magnetic levels and put those up against it so that we could use that for measuring and marking on the floor and that kind of thing. Those, those tools are really helpful. You have those ready. Um, and a plumb bob is a really handy thing as well when it comes to centering stuff. All right, so the first thing we had to do before we could start cutting the frame apart was strip it down, obviously. Um, don't need the, the old flatty in the way. And the first go around, we actually left the transmission in. We highly, <laughs> highly advise removing it. it. It really opens up so much real estate in here to be working and, and boxing in the backside of the, uh, where the frame butts up to it and well, that kind of thing. And just the, the two marks on the Ford frame are kind of tucked underneath the body a little bit where you need to cut. Mm -hmm. And having a clear line of sight with the transmission out of the way is a huge advantage. Yeah. So where we kind of started things off um, is that we began by measuring and really marking the front uh, front axle line. So get everything marked, um, where the front axle is, uh, where the back axle is, get the measurement on everything for your wheelbase, and then you can try and reproduce that when you go to put on the shoe bot or the S10 front end. Whole bracket moved. Yeah, we went about uh, cutting off the stock front end. Um, we There's a couple of different holes on the uh, shoebox frame that um, they're, they're symmetrical. They're on both sides. Small, probably not a whole lot bigger than the th uh, thickness of a Sharpie, yeah. roughly. And it's the same on both sides. So what you do is you cut at the front of those two uh, circles. So basically just cutting at the very front of that. And then on the, the S10 frame, um, close to it, there's also a pair of holes on the frame. On the very top of it, there are sort of these oval-ish. Kind of oblong yeah. looking holes. Um, and what you do is you cut at the very front of those. Um, that's really only a, a reference though. But you mm -hmm. start there and then slowly work your way up the S10 frame to get it to fit properly. Exactly, and that's the key. Don't shave the shoebox side. No. Just use those two holes on the uh, shoebox frame, cut, cut at the very front of them. Cut it as square as you can angle. get it. 
Exactly. Because <laughs> yeah. we ran into that issue where it wasn't perfect. Uh, my cuts weren't perfect on the, the shoebox frame. And a nice thing to do, the, part of the reason why that's a good way, is like, if in the middle of this process you decide like, I'm not doing this, I want to put the shoebox frame back on, uh, you can just butt it back up and weld, weld it. it and plate it and then you're done. And yep. It's going to be really easy to make sure that it goes back on perfectly. But, but you know, that's only if you check it out. <laughs> ah! We need to talk about a tram. You might be wondering, <laughs> you might be wondering, what is a tram? Well, it is a measuring device that is able to set up static points to use as a reference on like two different sides, yep. which is not a great way to describe it, but it kind of gives you an idea. <laughs> so what we did was we uh, started with some tube that we had laying around that is a larger diameter than the other tube, which allows it to be telescopic. Then we welded some tube on the two outside ends, threw a washer on so that we're able to set our depth. And what we did was there's a hole that's symmetrical on both sides of the shoebox frame. It's kind of like where the, um, the fender mount attaches yeah, to the kind of around the frame. The, there slash the pedal assembly where it's all hanging onto the frame. And that's symmetrical on both sides. So we used that hole as a reference, plug that in here. This is basically the same hole or same size as the hole. And then the washer lets you just butt it up against the frame on both sides. So you know that your depth isn't, it's not swinging in further on one side, which will change the measurement at the other end. So you do that with your tram and then you go to a point on the S10 frame and you do the exact same thing. And at the front of the S10 frame, is an oblong hole, kind of like where you cut at on the top of the S10 frame. On the front side, both sides, there's a symmetrical, um, but the hole, there's oblong holes that are symmetrical. They're on both sides. Yeah, and one very important thing yeah. is you want to go as far forward as you can, you can on the S10 frame. Mm -hmm. It'll give you the most accurate reading on what is twisted or out of adjustment. Precisely. So, tram is really handy for that. You set it on one side, use your, um, uh, you can either use a fuel injection, in this case we use a, a fuel injection hose clamp, or you can just use a regular hose clamp. And then you clamp that thing down and then you know that you've got this side locked in place, butt it up all tight, and then you can look at it and see what your distance is. And it was really handy for us because we knew that we had to shave off a little bit uh, to fix that. Yep, we ended up having to be about a quarter, and a quarter of an inch off on one side, so we just shaved off an eighth which yep. equals an eighth on the opposite side and mm -hmm. got it all squared away. Yeah, and that was because the S10 frame where it's cut on the top of it, you do end up shaving inward onto it. So that's kind of where you can end up with it kind of falling out of line a little bit. It'd be nice if it could be cut perfectly on those two spots, but um, we didn't find that that was the case. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, uh, so after hours and hours of <laughs> cutting, measuring, cutting, measuring, adjusting, cutting, measuring, uh, we're finally within like a sixteenth of an inch or maybe even a little bit less. So that's basically the margin for human error. Um, I don't know that a sixteenth of an inch is really going to cause uh, drivability issues. So. Um, what we're going to do is it's time to tack weld the S10 front end on here and uh, <clears throat> we're just going to tack weld it and we're probably going to call in another set of eyes to just help with the measuring, take a look. We're probably going to measure the wheelbase on the front against the wheelbase on the back because that's ultimately like the most important measurement uh, when it comes to having the car drive straight down the road. So. Um, Another thing that we figured out is like after a lot of cutting and grinding, uh, these frame rails are literally the same width. So, you know, just like uh, Josh and uh, Dan were talking about from the, the other video, the Village Customs video, <clears throat> they are actually the same width in one particular spot on the frame. So if you cut at those holes on the shoebox frame, uh, the S10 frame, uh, when you shave it down enough is actually the same width on the outside. So that's super cool. All right, um, I guess it's time to tack weld. <laughs> enough jabbering, let's, uh, let's make it stay in one spot. <laughs> So stoked about this part now. Like this. like this thing, it's so scary when you cut the front end of it off because you're like, you feel like there's no going back. Well, you know, you, you treat this like life, okay? You cut out all the horrible stuff and you fill it full of all the good stuff. So this is an analogy. It's an analogy for, for life. <laughs> okay. You got rid of all the nastiness. <laughs> now it's awesome. Well, that's the thing is like the nastiness is like functionally nasty. That's true. So it's like bad steering box, um, drum brakes, uh, kingpin setups, not bad. It's actually a pretty decent yeah. system, but now we've got power everything. Exactly. It's kind of like it's, it's out with the old and in with the new. Yep. When what's a bummer is the S10 front end is hideous, like the frame is disgusting <sighs> looking compared to the Fords. And it'll look a little bit better, we uh, still have to trim the whole front end of this off too, yeah. so that gets rid of all this nastiness. Yeah, you have to cut off like these funky horn looking things on the front end yeah, of it. body mounts. Oh, yeah, those come off, yeah. you box it in, and then you've got to build a mount for like your radiator and all that stuff, but yeah, not a big deal. So hey, we're at a point now where uh, we've got welding done. And so the, it's basically butted up, um, filled the weld, did like the butt weld style, and there's still a pocket on the back side of it that isn't completely filled yet, and that's because you need to box this thing in uh, to kind of like tie everything together, give it thicker steel that's welded nicely, and um, really secure it. Yeah, but before we get that far, because it's kind of no going back once we really yeah. secure this in place, we're gonna finish getting the suspension in, which includes getting the springs in and tightening everything down, putting the brakes on, putting the wheels on it, <laughs> yeah. kind of make it a roll. Yeah, exactly. And once we're at that point, then we can get a look at the fenders and make sure that we centered everything decently or as close to centered as possible um, as far as the front axle goes. And then, then we'll finally burn it in completely. <laughs> but at this point, if it's off a little bit, it's way easier to cut this out than a fish plate. Oh, gosh. And I mean, could you imagine like this big, um, what are we using, like 10, we're using like 10 gauge steel to make this big ass box and we'd have to cut that completely off then either to change it anything. Or shorten it depending yeah. on how far we're off either direction. And then we'd have to box around the thing, the cut that we did, it'd be ridiculous. So we're going to assemble this thing now and get a look at it. So One step at a time. Yeah, so let's grab that spring compressor and try not to kill ourselves. Safety glasses, spring <laughs> compressor. Safety squint. I'm gonna stand behind the wall. Fuck your hands. <laughs>
<laughs> sure, yeah. Okay, steering lock. <laughs> this looks like a steering lock. It looks like an early 2000s <laughs> dance move. Uh, yeah, I mean, isn't that like part of the Cupid shuffle? I have no Because you're just like, <laughs> you're like bus steering. I don't know, what is the Cupid shuffle? That's um, not that, because there's I feel no like shuffling involved. We in always that. end up, that's true. I'm <laughs> 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 getting my dance moves mixed up. We always end up doing that at Power Cruise. Everybody gets hammered, and then all of a sudden the Cupid shuffle comes nah. on. And then somehow we remember to do it. I have no clue. Yeah. It's, it's that like same state re <laughs> recollection. They say that like if you study stoned or drunk, you've got to make sure that you also take the test stoned or drunk because your same state that your mind is in, you'll recall the, the I facts can, better. I can vouch that, yeah. does not work. <laughs> it doesn't work? Okay. But then somehow we all know how to do the Cupid Shuffle at Power Cruise. Yeah. I don't know. We're all just so drunk we think we know how we do the Cupid That's Shuffle. That's probably it. <laughs> it's just a bunch yeah. of drunk of us just kind of like, uh, yeah. uh, singing Queen uh. songs. Uh, all right, you guys, so hopefully this video was uh, useful to you. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, just to recap, a few high points. Um, you know, it, this is a, a task that uh, it's daunting. It requires some skill, um, but it's doable. Yep. And uh, you don't necessarily have to be scared off unless you're the kind of person who runs into things blindly. But if you're that kind of person, you're probably not watching a video on YouTube on how to probably do this. Probably not. It's, 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 <laughs> over, like, it's over three minutes. How so hard you... can it be? You just cut it and you just weld it and you use my stick welder and Harbor Freight flux core and... <laughs> a couple of self-tappers will hold in place. Yeah, exactly. You just got to get some like flat stock from uh, Home Depot and some self-tappers and yeah, it'll, it'll be fine. Uh, yeah, it'll, it'll be rigid. Be fine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So it's, it's certainly a doable thing. It's just like we've said, you know, you cannot measure too many times. No. Expect to spend a lot of time on that. Don't rush into it. Unless you've got somebody who really knows their way around it. Like in the video that we reference, um, Josh Joyce from Village Customs and Dan. Um, it, Josh has done this a million times. If you know anything about Village Customs, you've seen that they've done a lot of shoe boxes. So. When he's like, yeah, you just cut here and here and we did this all in like basically a weekend, it's totally believable because he knows his way around it. If this is your first time diving into it, expect to spend a lot of time measuring and getting everything as perfect as you can get it. But it's worth it in the end. Yeah, Mind exactly. better ride, safer ride. Narrower wheelbase so it steers better. Um, yeah, exactly. And the fact that you can go to any O'Reilly's and get any part that you can imagine, including upgrades, I mean, if you wanted to stuff Willwood big brakes on the front of these things and, um, you know, if you wanted to LS swap it, you can basically get all the conversion pieces and everything. I mean, it's, it's oh, yeah, amazing. Yeah, we got drop spindles and two tubular upper control arms on this one. Yeah, so. exactly. And we actually got some DJM uh, drop pocket lower control arms, but decided against that just because we don't know yet exactly how the um, uh, ground clearance is going to work. Another three inches of drop might not have been a good thing, especially with it being the lower control arm that was the lowest point. Yeah, so that's something we had to figure especially out. Especially in Duluth. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, in the next episode, uh, we're going to be showing you guys how we started putting uh, the body pieces back on, making mounts on the S10 front end to do so, um, fitting the flathead. Uh, and then we are going to be doing a video specifically on doing the steering in this. Yep, That's so going to be exciting. Stay tuned, and uh, this thing should look like a car sometime again. Soon. <laughs> At least yeah. it rolls on its own now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so thank you for joining us, guys. We'll see you in the next one.